All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sean with uh, Blue Ridge Silverhound. We have your midweek edition of the Pocket Change Market Report as we do every single week. This time for January 25th, 2023. Uh, we have one more coming up after this, coming up on Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. And then the next one, I believe, is on February 1st, I think. Uh, I haven't really quite looked at the calendar these days. The, the, the whole month has been nothing but a blur, you know, b between um, the market and, uh, you know, just everybody going beyond and moving past the holidays. I thought we were going to slow down a little bit. It's not looking like that at all. Um, so if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, this is where we talk about some of the most interesting, most relevant finds that people have thrown up on eBay and have monetized off of errors and varieties. Again, these are coins that people have found uh, coin roll hunting, um, going through large amounts of change. Uh, we see that quite a bit um, on YouTube. Uh, but also folks that go to the coin shops and local shows and they cherry pick. Uh, because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, cherry picking some of these varieties and errors can be a huge way to not only add to your collection, but to also make a really nice secondary income. Uh, so if you guys haven't tried it before, I would encourage you guys to do so. Uh, so yeah, before we jump right in, a quick little update. Vault Box went on sale. Uh, there were a number of server crashes and issues. As I expected would, it's no, it was nothing like the U.S. Mint on their uh, their big release days of some of their items. Um, actually, pretty pretty close to it. I'll be honest. Um, but I just about gave up after like seven minutes of refreshing and refreshing, and I, I gave it a few minutes. I came back in about five minutes later. Uh, things seem to have resolved itself a little bit. Picked one up. Um, and then it sold out right around 24 minutes in. So that's kind of the update there. I don't intend on doing any sort of video unless it's warranted. Uh, but yeah, I, I've read all the comments. Uh, there was a lot of trolls out there, man. Um, they're just really poo-pooing this product, really bashing it down to, uh, two bits. Um, saying that it's not going to sell out and it's crap and all that stuff. And, uh, if that were the case, it wouldn't have sold out. It wouldn't have sold out within the first half hour. And, uh, you know, this is something that's going to change the landscape of future products, whether it's through another company, through Vaultbox, um, even probably through some of the worldwide mints. We'll see. Uh, but this, this can certainly open up a lot more ideas. Uh, for those think tanks out there that's really looking to change things up and uh, it should be a lot of fun I'm going I am going to do a reveal video of my one soul vault box and uh, you know we'll see how it is uh, whatever the outcome is uh, it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to document it and um, yeah it's gonna be pretty cool but anyways back to the PCMR let's go ahead and jump right in these are all activities from the last 12 hours of sales on eBay. Uh, we're going to start it off with this one here. We don't typically see uh, this copper-coated zinc era, so anything post-1982, uh, with a struck-through capped die. This one, of course, is a much later state because you're able to see, uh, like the date, you could see Liberty. Um, yeah, this this cap die was uh, pretty, pretty thin, so that that uh, coin was stuck to the hammer die, uh, never let up, and it struck a whole bunch of other coins with it on there, and it eventually it gets very razor thin like paper, um, and it either crumbles away, falls off, or a mint employee comes and, um, uh, you know, they repair it, they take the cap off, and then, you know, resume the normal strikes. So uh, this is what it would look like on a copper-coated zinc -in. We typically see struck-through cap dies on the older bronze era of coins, so anything before 1982, uh, which, which means we don't see too many of them in this composition. This one right here ended up selling for $60.10. And the, the one thing that you want to keep an eye out on on this type of error is that you're going to have a really strong reverse strike 
and then the other side is going to be really, really weak. Um, it, this has been mistaken to be struck through major amounts of grease. I've heard that before, uh, but they just have two distinct looks uh, that once you see them, you'll know what they are. The next one that we have here, we actually have a few really nice off-center struck coins. Uh, I mean, probably more than I've seen in, in quite a while, especially in a 24-hour period. But how about this 1971D? This is probably one of the cleanest looking mint state examples I've seen. Uh, I'll say this one's probably off-center by about 70%, maybe a little higher than that. Uh, beautiful coin. I would imagine that this is going to go into some sort of off-center date set. For the series, this one ended up selling for $53.78. Okay, so uh, make sure you check out your scrap silver. You know, I, I have one of these make out, make sure you check out your scrap silver kind of entries uh, on the list because there's a lot to look for in your junk silver. You know, we take for granted that we end up buying, you know, this junk 90% silver. And we kind of uh, cast it away, you know, in a, the corner of a closet or in a safe deposit box as being our silver hoard, right? Um, but there are a lot of varieties, a lot of double dies, a lot of RPMs and various other things. But also errors like this, uh, you could see right on the reverse of the coin here. Uh, this is what a lamination would look like on a silver coin. Uh, so this one right here has uh, recirculated a little bit where that area had turned a little bit dark and tarnished. Uh, this one right here sold for $51 with two bids. Uh, not the greatest error that you will come across, but it is still one that will make your coin worth a lot more than just silver melt values. So make sure you're looking out for these. Pretty nice little error here. Uh, one of, you know, in contrast to the previous coin, this is probably one of the more dramatic errors that you could come across. This is a 1997 Lincoln Memorial scent that was double struck. So you had your first primary main strike, and then you had a secondary strike that's roughly about 55% off center. Um, yeah, pretty crazy coin. Uh, even more crazier if it had a readable second date. Uh, but still, something like this, very, very cool. And much like the first coin on the list, uh, this one is a copper-coated zinc in. So you do have lots of exposed zinc on this coin. Um, if it were me and I'm looking for a coin like this, I would either look at a different denomination with a more stable composition, like nickel or something to that effect, maybe a, uh, a clad quarter, um, or maybe an older bronze Lincoln, something that's pre-1982. Um, those are generally going to uh, uh, weather the storm a lot longer than one like this that, you know, has its days numbered uh, only because the entry of moisture and various things like that will begin to eat away at the zinc that we're, that it's, that's exposed there. Uh, this one right here, really wild sale. Again, this is to be expected for this type of error. $162.50 with 24 bids. We have one other one later on in the show that's going to knock your socks off. So this one's pretty cool. You just never know what you're going to find on any coin, right? The misconception is all the errors are found on Philadelphia minted coins. You've probably heard that, uh, that statement before. However, take a look at this bicentennial quarter. It's got a Denver mint mark, so you know it's not Philly. Uh, but there's a pretty tremendous amount of strike through on the reverse. Uh, I would say grease with some miscellaneous debris, you know, maybe some metal shavings, some uh, some dirt and dust all mixed in uh, to this uh, th this oxide grease that they use. Uh, but there you go, man. That's, that's a really wild looking error. Uh, again, if you don't flip your coins over to look at both sides of the coin, you can miss out. I know I have before. Uh, I've eventually slapped my hand a few times. Uh, so, you know, don't get lazy. Look at both sides of the coin. Um, this is, of course, a very, very distinguishable design of quarter with the dual date and the drummer boy reverse. This one, ladies and gentlemen, sold for $35.51 with five bids. Very nice coin. Uh, here's our other, uh, actually we have a few more after this, uh, 1967 Lincoln Memorial scent. This one's about 50, 55% off center. 
Uh, it does have some sort of corrosion on the reverse, uh, so you know we can't can't exactly ignore that aspect of this one. But really cool, very nice coin, uh, tougher date, and this one sold for fifty four dollars and seventy nine cents. And I, there are people that are going to bring up the fact that you can't find these in circulation. Number one, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Sure, it might be the most difficult type of error to look for. Um, and number two, these can be cherry-picked at a coin shop. I've cherry-picked a lot of these, and they're selling them for $15, $20, and I think they're too low. Um, the, the type of money that, that you would spend $15, $20 on something like this would be a, say, 1999 or 2000, a much later date. Uh, 99 and 2000, by the way, are two of the more common dates for off-center strikes. Uh, but 67, yeah, we don't see these come up maybe once every month or two. Uh, so that's pretty infrequent. Uh, as a result, this one did end up being bought for $54.79. And another good one here as well, 1964D. Wow, uh, this is a, a date that you don't see that often, uh, maybe a few times a year. Uh, coins in great shape, no damage to speak of, very clean, presentable example. This one right here sold for $58.79. Uh, so coins and cards add again with another 1955 FS101 doubled die offers. I mean, who else, right? Uh, coins and cards has a knack for um, delivering the heavy hitters. And they're, guess what? Not graded. Uh, again, don't you don't have to grade these type of coins, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, if you're selling a legit example, the people that care about these will know exactly what to look for. <clears throat> as far as die markers are concerned, they're pretty distinguishable on these coins. Uh, and the fake ones are really bad. So, um, yeah, I, again, uh, what else can you say? Just, just a really premium example here of this coin. Uh, this one ended up selling for $2,081 with 34 bids. And um, it's very likely that Coins and Cards will have more heavy-hitting varieties on his uh, eBay store in the foreseeable future. We saw it all last year. And then, again, to kick off 2023, uh, they have delivered some pretty nice examples for the Mega Collectors. Uh, and this is actually probably one of my top five favorite varieties within the Lincoln Memorial Set series. And this is the 1960D large or small over large date. All right. I wanted to go ahead and say this is a dual variety. Small o over large date. It's a, it's a DDO. Uh, and it's also a repunch mint mark as well. Uh, very, very cool coin. You could see actually... Um, uh, both elements of the small date and the large date kind of like molding into one. It's, it really looks like a dog dish of excitement. When you do come across these, you know exactly what you're finding here. Um, and then that RPM is uh, right above the main letter D that was punched in. Uh, so the secondary D is north of the primary. Uh, and it's almost 100% completely detached from the actual regular mint mark. Uh, so what is something like this that obviously has a little circulation wear to it sell for? This one ended up selling for $104.35 with four total bids to get there. Uh, we don't have much in the way of currency, and I that was by design. I, I want, didn't want to load up with too much paper money on this particular episode. But hey, we're going to throw in a little sur silver certificate. Uh, these are the actual images, by the way. So they are a little faded looking, um, it may be a dirty lens or too much light, um, exposed on this particular image, but there you go. Uh, just a good old worn silver certificate, uh, on the front. That's exactly what it looks like. But when we look at the reverse, oh boy, we got some gutter folds on here. Uh, I count like three of them. It looks like. Uh, pretty cool when they're all kind of like uh, webbed out the way that this one is. Uh, this is caused by simply just wrinkles in the sheet before the print was applied. And um, there there you go. So uh, you notice that there's no guttering on the front. So the, the, um, the wrinkles were not stretched out prior to the first initial print, which is that reverse print. 
And uh, again, very attractive looking uh, error, although it's one of the lower end of the totem pole types of errors. This one managed to sell for $38.10 with eight bits, and that's even in this uh, kind of like uh, circulated condition. Like it's no beauty queen for sure. Now this one's pretty neat. I wish there were better pictures, but I looked at it for a while and I could 100% say this is a legitimate double struck coin. Uh, it's a 1993 Washington quarter. The secondary strike is only 10% off center. All right, but you'll notice that the secondary strike of everything is raised. Okay, it's not in cues as if it was like a, a vice job or something like that. So uh, that's quite remarkable. And then, again, this is something that, that will trick most people. So you got to be 100% careful of how you diagnose these type of uh, errors uh, because they are among one of the more expensive error types out there. Uh, but this one right here, pretty raw, uh, ungraded. Uh, looks to be that there's a few scratches on the obverse as well. Um, it, it's it's a big deal because they're quite noticeable and quite long on there. So this particular coin ended up selling for a staggering sum of three hundred and two dollars and ninety nine cents. Again, probably something that you want to buy already graded. But if you did that, the price would jump up probably two to three x. So just be careful know what you're looking for and uh it's been a good little minute since we talked about good old tuskegee airmen probably about a month since we've seen a uh, a nice one on the pcmr but yeah this is a good looking one right here and it's in pretty decent shape uh there is a fingerprint on the obverse but i think at the end of the day we could kind of forego that because there are too many premium bu specimens out in the wild today uh, some of them are going to have some degree of circulation wear. Uh, but there you go. Uh, a really nice sized burning building strike through. And it's got the secondary strike through uh, right under the, uh, the airplane's wing area right there. So this is the one that you want. It's the more later advanced type of this error. And this one sold for $95.25. So it's glad to see that there's still some sort of endearing market for these. Um, you know, and they are very affordable now c compared to what they were two years ago when, you know, they were, or not, too, not two years, maybe a year and a half, uh, when these things were about $300 for the same type. Well, I, I, I can imagine this can be found, you know, in just like bulk steel sense. Uh, this one is off center by a little bit, probably seven, eight percent, nothing truly, um, dramatic. Um, the coin does exhibit some of the natural kind of uh, corrosion that you would expect on a um, zinc coated steely uh, like this one here. So even with this minor kind of off center error, it did sell for fifty five dollars and twenty four cents. And in 1961, again, just uh, nothing too crazy. We have a one singular curved clip on this one. And how about $11.77 sale on this? Um, sure beats just throwing the coin back in your change jar or in a, uh, a bankroll to send back to the bank. Because, uh, you know, if you get a score of $10 bill for this thing, it's, it's already worth it. Here's another really good off-center strike. Uh, and this is probably the best example of a coin with exposed zinc. And you can kind of begin to see... The beginning process of some of that oxidation on the zinc. See how it's kind of like a frosty white? That's when you know the corrosion process is beginning on this. So this right here is all the, the white frosty stuff. This exposed zinc here around the tea and scent and then down here below. That's kind of like more normal, right? Um, that's like a fresh nick of the, uh, the, the, the copper plating. Um, so you can see it's already starting to begin on this one. And that's that, that's too bad because this is uh, not exactly a common date either for uh, for this anomaly. And it's a pretty decent looking one. I would say it's probably like 35% off center. Uh, this one sold for 20 bucks. So again, pretty decent amount of return on this one. Uh, pretty cool. I, I love talking about these. I've come across these on a number of occasions. Uh, 1952 Jefferson Nickel. What happened there on the reverse? Uh, well, I can tell you that this coin uh, was struck and then it split in half right down the, the middle on its edge. 
and uh, they call this a split after strike error. Um, so you kind of have that like that stone kind of like granite look when these things split apart, and that's normal. That that's what it's supposed to look like. But you'll know that the coin is also half as thick as well. So make sure you're kind of uh, double checking some of the uh, the obvious traits of this error. Uh, this one sold for $51.38, which is just a really good amount of money. I've seen these sell for a lot less. Uh, this one's easy to miss. 1981p, candy half dollar. Doesn't really look too crazy. Uh, quite honestly, this thing has seen a lot of play in circulation. Maybe been through a few uh, slot machines during its time. But there's a nice little cut die break right above the T and Liberty on the obverse there. Uh, again, yeah, pretty easy to miss. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've missed a few myself. This one sold for uh, only $8, but you got to consider its condition as well. $8 with 8 bits. Really beautiful one here from Brian Rybar, 1952 S over S RPM Lincoln Wheat Set. Uh, always a favorite. Very nice. I probably have near pretty close to a full roll of these. Uh, not in this condition. I might have one that's pretty close to this condition, but, uh, this is WRPM number one. And you have a secondary S mint mark that's punched east of the primary, uh, on this. So, um, yeah, I, you can see that double top curve of the S, which is, uh, one of the features you're going to look out for on air. Uh, $21.90 was the sale price on this. And that's, Largely because of its condition. It's it's really nice. Uh, speaking of really unique cuts, how about this 1994P Roosevelt dime, uh, which has two separate cuds on the reverse. So two pieces, two little pieces of the die had fallen off, and it produced this remarkable looking gem that you see here. Uh, I would imagine that this one sold for a decent amount, and it did. Uh, it's already attributed on CudsOnCoins.com as being CU-10C-1994P-02R and 03R. So it's got two different attribution points for this one for each of the Cuds. $52.11 was the sale price with four bids. So that's a very nice attractive coin. Uh, again, that's one that we don't see that often. Uh, here's another off-center error on a actually pleasing looking 1983p. This coin is in pretty nice shape uh, for the date. And uh, off-center by a little bit, maybe 5%, you know, really, really minor. This one ended up selling for $39.95. And I think that has more to do with the actual grade than the error. Another big cut, and we actually, the next few coins to wrap up the PCMR this week... All come from Indie Coin Dealer. Uh, this is uh, from Matt uh, from the uh, Coin Show Radio podcast. Uh, great guys over there, by the way. If you haven't checked out their YouTube and uh, their Facebook and their podcast, you should. It, it's a it's they these gentlemen have been around for a long time, and um, I remember watching them a long time ago when they first started. Um, they were like a few episodes in and it's like one of the most unapologetic, very, very professional, very educated, driven type of podcasts, um, that you will come across. All right. So go ahead and check them out. But this one from Matt, 1971 S Lincoln Memorial scent features a pretty healthy size cut. This is one that we don't see come up in auction too often, but I'm glad to see one here today. Uh, this one ended up selling for $69.52 with seven bids. So a very, very nice sale price on this one. About kind of on par of what you would expect for this size of a cut die break. And uh, for Matt as well, he also had this uh, beautiful 1964 Jefferson Nickel. So what's going on here? Uh, the coin's been broad struck, so there wasn't any collar engaged during the striking process to keep the coin in place. Uh, so all that extra metal flow goes outwards, as you guys know. Uh, it's like pushing your thumb into a ball of Play-Doh. You know, it makes it a lot larger than it actually is. Uh, but it also has an indent. So there is a blank planchet that was overlapping it during the strike, creating that indent, which means... There's another coin somewhere out in the world. If it didn't get caught, 
that will be a perfect matching uh, piece to this, kind of like the key to the lock deal. Uh, so this one sold for $46.09 with 25 bids. And uh, also from Indie Coin Dealer was this very nice double struck Roosevelt dime. Uh, and it uh, appears to be a uniface. It might not be. Um, yeah, it is. Uniface reverse there on that little off center secondary strike. Uh, attractive coin. A again, uh, this is the kind that you want if you're looking for a double struck coin. Uh, bonus points for, for a secondary strike that features a full date and mint mark. This one, however, did end up selling for $53 with 24 bits. And the final coin for this little bit shorter edition of the PCMR is going to be another of my favorites. This is a two-feather buffalo nickel. Uh, so there were a number of dates that has this particular variety where it's simply just an uh, over-abraded die or an over-polishing of the die that virtually obliterated the third feather. Uh, which is normally right here. Uh, this one is a 1926 S or D rather 1926 Denver Buffalo nickel. Uh, one of the premier dates for this type of variety. And you can find them in the teens, twenties, and even early in the thirties. This particular example right here, while not the, the nicest example, because it does have a few little um, distracting nicks, did sell for $35, and I'm willing to bet you could probably pick this one up at a coin shop for around a dollar. Um, don't let the key date fool you. When they become this low of a grade, they're a lot affordable than you think. But that is going to do it for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully uh, the, the show, as always, gives you a little inspiration to do a little bit more hunting for yourself and finding some gems you could add to your collection or to supplement your income in some way or fashion. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Thank you so much for tuning in on this edition of the PCMR. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And that's going to go ahead and wrap her up. So you guys take care, happy hunting, and I will see you on the next coin video. So long.